Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it up for 30 plus years. Where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and your weight maintenance. Today we're going to talk about quick on-to-go snacks that can be a meal substitute for you. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my other podcasts or my podcast, The Awakened Man, which is very health related. The Cinema Rag, which is about movies, so it's not... And if you are looking to get knowing more about the Christian faith, I have a YouTube channel on Christianity as well. Now, sometimes you're on the go. Like right now, I have my daughter. She might come in right now. And we're packing for the day. And I need to, we're going to go swimming. We're going to go to church. We're going to go hang out at a coffee shop. And maybe you don't want to spend $6 to pick up something. Or you don't want to go to fast food and pick up crap for her or for you so what are like some quick on-the-go items that you can get because sadly most on-the-go items are going to be middle aisle grocery store foods and we talked about how grocery stores that's where they make their money this is where gas stations make their money is all the food inside they mark up and so the majority of those fake foods those franken foods in the middle aisles it's garbage we need to be eating fresh foods as we can but we live in a world today that sometimes it's difficult to do that so if you have to grab stuff on the go, stuff that is non-perishable, that isn't going to get bad. Like if I could scrounge up some scrambled eggs, eggs are great. They're protein balls here. You know, we've talked about the, 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 the great thing about pastured eggs. But you know, I can't take eggs out for seven hours during the day in 100 degree heat. So like, what do you do? Well, you got to look at something that has a good macronutrient profile. So. If, if we're looking at the majority of the middle aisle foods are almost always a, some combination of carby stuff mixed with some sweet stuff or some salty stuff. And the beauty of like goldfish or chips, obviously, is that they don't get bad. Something like a granola bar you could leave in your car for months probably isn't going to go bad. But all these things are just carbs and excess carbs lead to obesity. And since you've lost your weight and want, you're wanting to lose your weight, you don't want to go down that road. So we have to think of foods that have a decent amount of healthy fats, a decent amount of protein, and yeah, might have some carbs. So most of the carby snacks are crap for the aforementioned reason, not to mention a lot of them have monosodium glutamate or they have preservatives laden in them or food dyes. Think of Cheetos. I mean, Cheetos have all these things. So we, don't, we want to avoid that. So what I would do is kind of go to things that can be weather resistant, so to speak, don't need to be refrigerated, but still pack a pretty good profile. So nuts, nuts are a great thing because in, when, we, when we say nuts, we're gonna include cashews as well because even though cashews are a legume and some other nuts like peanuts are actually legumes as well. So nuts obviously uh, don't get bad. Nuts have a very good macronutrient profile. Yes, some nuts. And you can't be eating like you know, five gallons of nuts because they do have a lot of calories and they have a lot of fat. Now, the fat in nuts as a whole are going to be monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats with a little saturated. So the mufas and the pufas. And so the, the fat, they are very high in fat. Fat doesn't make you fat, guys. That's what Ansel Keys was shoving down your throat back in the 1960s and 70s. And that's what he created the paradigm that fat makes you fat. You need to, you need to eat more carbs, which was nonsense. Now we know that's not the case. So nuts are definitely a good go-to. You could do even dark chocolate covered nuts. I'd say the chocolate will probably melt, but if you're in a climate where they don't melt, you can get chocolate covered nuts. I would probably do dark chocolate covered nuts over like yogurt flavored nuts. And obviously with the nuts, they are roasted in inflammatory, rancid, industrial grade vegetable oils. So the majority of nuts, if you can really develop a taste for them, I'd be going with uncooked nuts, unroasted nuts, so natural nuts or whole, whole unroasted almonds or cashews or whatever they are. But if you can't do that and you need to get ones that are roasted, try to get them lightly roasted and lightly salted. Macadamia nuts as a whole are the, probably the greatest nutrient profile, followed by Brazil nuts and then almonds. Peanuts are the worst. They, they, they really, that's why peanut butter is so cheap. Speaking of with the nut butters, I would probably go more with nuts over the nut butters, simply because the nut butters as a whole are processed. They are more processed than the nuts and the nuts are just easier uh, to take around. 
I would do dark chocolate, high percentage dark chocolate. Yes, I have a bias because that's on, on the, the playlist we have here, 20 kitchen items that have helped me keep my weight off. Dark chocolate bars is one of them. Uh, so if they don't melt, dark chocolate's great because again, it, it's filling because it's a lot of fat and the macronutrient and micronutrient profile of, of dark chocolate is very good. So I would take that as well. I would think about also full fat Greek yogurt, but again, that needs to be at least in a container. If, it, if heat's not a problem, that's something that you could do as well. And on that one, you can put the fruit. You, if you wanna put, I'd put on ripened bananas, even though they don't taste as great. Put in blueberries, put in some cinnamon, which is great for your heart. I'd probably you know, skim out and don't put a lot of granola because that's just empty sugar. But if it's something that you can take indoors, let's say if you're in summer heat, you could take with you if you don't have a refrigerator, then certainly full fat Greek yogurt is an option as well. If you like even eating avocados, just buy themselves. You know, ripe avocado, you can peel it, you can put it on toast, prep that. But if, if you can just eat avocado just um, and eat it, that's another one you can do quick on the go. The thing is like, we, we just want to avoid garbage. And the thing is we can go three weeks without eating. So it's not like, and I always exhort to you the, the, the best, the, the kind of the efficacy and the, the, the efficacy of fasting. So don't have this idea that you need to eat every three hours or five hours. You don't. So if you need to pack stuff on the go, you really don't. You could probably wait till you get home where you can make a meal, where you can control all the ingredients. And that's what I would recommend. But if you have to eat something on the go or you're on an airplane for 10 hours, I would really think about, aside from healthy, low glycemic uh, fruits, such as blackberries, blueberries, uh, and avocado, which is a superfood, I would really go with high percentage dark chocolate and I would go with nuts. Those are really, in my opinion, your go-tos. Guys, post in the comments, what else would you add to this list? I'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, take care, God bless and pray.